Welcome back to another amazing episode of Black Girl Healing Session, which is a part of my Unapologetically Shine podcast. Remember, you can always listen to my podcast on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Radio Public, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and I always upload an episode on YouTube. All right, so... Today's episode for Black Girl Healing Session will be called We Need a Safe Place, meaning us women. I also wanted to say I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving since this will be, of course, after Thanksgiving. And, you know, I hope you also enjoyed the last episode that was um dealing with abandonment issues that episode really really resonated with me because i personally deal with abandonment issues so i thought that it was a perfect topic to talk about because that's something that we all have to deal with so i hope you all took something from it i hope that you also shared it to somebody that you know that is also dealing with abandonment issue or really isn't aware that they have them so that they can heal from them all right let's let's really talk about why i say we need a safe place i know you all hear about the different stories if you're a crime buff like you like to watch different crime shows or like the id channel um or you know even on youtube i watch a lot of um crime youtubers that tell stories you know about crime and get into you know solving different mysteries when it comes to missing people and all of that well this one is going to be more about you know women and the crimes that have been committed towards women now lately it seems like you hear more and more about uh pregnant women being murdered and you know really harmed or even women that's finding out that they're pregnant and then they tell the person that they got pregnant by and then they murder them it's like where can we as women be safe in this world because it's like there's nobody protecting women especially black women like you're hearing this more and more and more that black women are being treated like worse than animals black people in general but women are getting the brunt of it all it seems and it's really sad like i was just watching on youtube about this young lady she got pregnant by her boyfriend or whatever and she decided to tell him that she was pregnant he already told her before that she didn't want that he didn't want any more children right okay so she got pregnant she and she decided to tell her family okay i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna tell him so if anything happened to me you already know where i'm at which was a good thing that she did that even though her family was like are you playing when she texted them and said she was kidnapped by this guy which she was and and so at least her family knew where she was at so to wrap up the story he did take her life because he didn't want any more children now the problem in this whole situation is men if you do not want children go get a vasectomy why would you harm a person because you don't want a child or you can just go be a deadbeat and be an absent father and go disappear like you don't have to take somebody's life because you don't want a child she could take her her child by herself plenty of women do it every day so that that is really sad and also as women i i don't want a victim shame or anything like that that's not what i'm talking about but remember to protect yourself and, and really pay attention to the the men you're having children by because you always get a red flag when somebody 
is off. And and I, I'm sure she just, you know, didn't read into the red flags. And that's the sad part in this whole, you know, whole story that she had to lose her life because she didn't read the red flags about this person. So basically, I'm just saying like, it, us women, we need a place where we can feel safe and not have to feel like we always have to be on guard and protect ourselves because people won't protect us. Our black men will not protect us. They down us. As you can see all the time, they always talk bad about black women when they came from a black woman. It does, it never, made any sense to me why a lot of black men have so much ill feeling to black women and they feel dating outside their race is much better like a woman is not a woman every woman is a woman we all are women so it don't matter what color skin it's still a woman so i i don't know if they feel like we are just strong-willed or we not gonna take they mess and they mad about that so they think they can go to another woman of another color like anything's gonna change and no just like latin women they consider them as feisty but as black women we're angry but we we do the same stuff so i i never got that so that doesn't make any sense to me but i didn't want to go off into that that topic quite yet so i'm gonna go back to the about you know the rise in pregnant women being murdered pregnant black women like it's just too many too many cases that i have seen like these women are coming home from their baby showers getting murdered by ex-boyfriends and and crazy boyfriends like it's sad so you 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 basically you don't know you just killed a child that could have changed the world you don't know because you took that mother and that child's life so you don't know what that child would have became you don't know what that woman would have became you took their lives because you didn't want responsibility or you're jealous because they're with somebody else having a baby with somebody else i can i don't get it i don't get it like why do they hate us so much I don't know if it's like pre-programmed what they're seeing to hate black women but it's just it's sad and it's disgusting and i don't get it that's that is why women have to feel like they have to be on guard and protect themselves so much because nobody's protecting us what are we supposed to do we can't be vulnerable because we have to be strong because who else is gonna be there for us like we can't fall because we have to be the one to pick up the pieces and, and that's that's really the problem in all of this is because we should not have to always feel like we have to be superwoman when is the time for us black women to be able to feel vulnerable and to feel like a woman when do we get that moment I know it's a whole lot of people listening to this and can relate because I, I can be honest with you right now and say, I hate being considered the strong woman. I hate it with a passion. It's like, when do I get to break down? When do I get to feel sad? When do I get to say, this is not for me. I need a break. I want to run away. I want to crawl up in the corner in a fetal position like I can't do that because I have to make sure everything is going smoothly and right or it's gonna fall apart that's what it feels like I don't know if it's like like embedded in our DNA to actually feel like that you know from generations and generations like it's literally coming down the line where we always had to feel like that because our ancestors had to feel like that because they had to be strong and protect themselves so it's like coming down the line i don't know if that's the case but i truly believe like we need to be able to feel safe and when are we gonna have that moment where we can be able to be safe and protected because right now it just don't feel like we are ever gonna get that 
we're, it's like they're taking, it's like they're trying to get rid of us. I, I don't get it. Like, you see all the kidnapping of black women and, and young girls and all of this with sex trafficking and getting taken. And, and I believe, let me put this right here. I believe they're trying to take women's uh, reprodu reproductive sorry, organs, uteruses. I believe they're trying to do that. That's probably why another reason why a lot of these women are going missing is because they're using their 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 organs. They're using their uteruses. They're taking from us. They're trying to get rid of black women. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care if you think this is conspiracy or nothing, but I believe that something is going on that's more sinister than you really think. Like we live in a world that's really jacked up. Like so jacked up. And it's like, I just think more and more like like this real like sorry earth really feels like we're really in hell all if you sit and you think about all the things that's going on this is hell it's like it don't get no no worse than this you see nothing but crazy all around you you hear nothing but crazy all around you you see nothing but evil all around you and it's crazy but this is gonna be a whole nother topic i don't want to go veer off into that but that's why i just feel like us black women need to stick together we we do not have people that will protect us and it's very blatant and obvious that our black men don't really care about us as much as you will like we fight for them but they don't fight for us it is some i will not say all black men i would say a lot of them do not fight for us they do not submit to us they will submit to women of other colors they will not submit to us but want us to submit to them that's another conversation too about submitting to each other because a lot of people they think a lot of men think Oh, black women do not submit. You know why women do not submit? It's because they don't feel safe. They don't feel secure. If a woman don't feel safe or secure, she will not submit to you. Bingo. That's, that's it right there. So that is why black women don't feel safe and they don't feel secure. So that's why they always on guard and they don't submit to you. So men, if any men listen to me, that, that is the reason why women do not submit. So another thing, back on, because I'm going to have to wrap this up. You know, I don't like to make these very long. If you do want them to be longer, I can make them longer. I just thought that, you know, some people don't like to listen to super duper long podcasts. I do sometimes, but not all the time. So, but the the whole thing is we just need to as black women we're gonna have to stick together and we're gonna have to protect ourselves until until other our men will see us for who we are respect us for who we are protect us because right now they're not doing that they're not doing that they all see the flaws they don't and they don't see the root cause of it all and a lot of it is self-hate that's why they they just it's like them looking at us it's like them looking in a mirror and they hate what they see that is that's the main reason you know so there's a lot of self-hate so hey if they want to go over over you know to another race that's fine do do you but black women we have to protect ourselves you know we have to protect ourselves we have to stick together and know that god is always with us anyway so our true protector is god but in well while we're on this earth you know just keep your eyes and ears open don't be so trusting in certain people also i think i make that another conversation too because a lot of people trust and put their trust so easily into people and you you never know what their motives or intentions are so so just keep your guards up with certain people and, and don't look past the red flags you know because that could really truly save your life but 
I hope that you all had a great holiday and you know the Christmas is coming up next and I just hope that you all are mentally and spiritually you know grounded and happy because I know during the holidays are really hard they're hard for me too um so I just hope that you all are really getting through it and if you don't have any family you know just know you can always talk to me I have social media if you need a friend I'm here uh, my Instagram is natural underscore that's underscore me. And of course, my YouTube is Life with Sean. So you can always message me or anything like that if you need someone to talk to. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. And I just hope that you all understand that us black women, we do need to come together and be our own safe place, you know. We don't have to rely on anybody else to keep us safe. We're going to have to start keeping ourselves safe. And it's all right if you, with the whole dating situation, you can date outside your race. It's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's what we need to do. I'm married, so that's not what I'm saying, me. But a lot of our black women, if, if a man ain't no good, it's all right to open your options. You don't have to settle for trash just saying all right this is not a bash on black men no i love black men i have no issue with black men but the, the key word in that is men because a lot of the grown boys are the ones that's talking and are the ones that don't protect us so know the difference between a man and a boy and a grown boy all right Thank you for listening to Black Girl Healing Session. I hope that you got something from this. And if you have not, or this doesn't relate to you, maybe, you know, share with somebody that you feel will really get something out of this. And I hope that you are healing and feeling blessed. And also make sure you're writing in a journal about this episode, about how you feel unsafe or you feel or how you feel um a man our black men can keep us safe all right all right listen to us every wednesday on unapologetically sean again we are available on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify breaker pocket cast radio public anchor and I always upload an episode on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Life With Shine. All right. Bye. And welcome back to another episode of Unapologetically Shine, where I talk about everything self-care, mental health, and a splash of pop culture. Um, you can always listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Spotify, Anchor, and also I upload an episode every week on YouTube on my channel, Life with Sean. So today's episode is going to be about stop being so hard on yourself. Now, let me tell you, this episode is definitely going to resonate with me because I am my number one critic. <laughs> And I'm very, very hard on myself. Like most of us are, you know, I'm a perfectionist. And sometimes being a perfectionist can be a blessing and a curse, you know, because you, you always want things to be right. You know, you want things to be perfect. And all, in all reality, everything is not going to be perfect. So being a perfectionist is kind of like, setting yourself up to be disappointed every time so this is what we're going to talk about sometimes certain stuff is out of our control you know and being so hard on ourselves when we don't accomplish stuff in like a certain time frame or we don't accomplish the things that we believe that's meant for us when and when in all actuality it might not even be in the cards for us you know this might be somebody else's blessing we thinking this is ours so 
my advice to you today is to try to be a little nicer to yourself. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up when things don't work out the way you believe it's supposed to work out. And another thing, I'm going to tie this in because I thought about doing this as a separate video, but I don't really think I need to. We can just talk about it here. But we all need to stop living on this imaginary timeline that we have to have things completed by a certain age or a certain time frame. Like time is an illusion. Really age is an illusion too. It's what we're programmed to believe that exists, but in all actuality, it really doesn't exist. So what's meant for somebody that happened for them at 25 it might happen for you at 45 you know you can't put yourself and compare yourself to other people's journey because what's meant for you is meant for you so I'm gonna give you an example look at look at Alia the singer look at how much she accomplished in her 22 years of life many people will never accomplish that much in that short amount of time in their whole life but she accomplished so much in her young life so what's meant for her that was the journey that was the path she was supposed to go on just like um who else i can think of oh colonel sanders kfc chicken person um do you know that colonel sanders was in his 60s when he came up with with KFC in his 60s. He had a hard life way before he created this, but he was in his 60s when this happened. Now you might think, oh, I need to be successful by this age, or by 30, or by 25. I need to have this. I need to have a husband and, a, and kids. Look, Janet Jackson had her first child at 50. Yeah, she probably took her time. She wanted to get the right man and all that, wanted to get married. But she was 50 when she had her first child. Again, there you know the little boy, um, Ryan, off the YouTube, and he got all this stuff? He's like nine years old, and he's a millionaire. So if you compared your life to this child, then you would have expected you to be a millionaire at nine years old. But that was his path. That that's what God intended for his life so you see where I'm going like stop comparing your life to other people if it's meant for you to have it at that time it's gonna happen don't think that oh I don't have a, a big house by the time I'm 20 I, I don't have a big house by the time I'm 35 some people never have a house at all <laughs> so you gotta think about like when it's supposed to happen, it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Your journey is going to happen. So just be nice on yourself. If it don't happen when you want it to happen, maybe you need to sit and reflect and think about, maybe I'm not ready for it at this moment. God is not going to give you anything that you can't handle. So if something's not happening for you in your life at the very moment, it means you can't handle it at that very moment, but it's coming when you're ready. So evaluate and see what you need to change in your life so that whatever you're manifesting can align with you. It's already happened in another time frame for you. You just have to catch up. I always have to remind myself like whatever that I want that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to manifest, I have to think like I already have it it's already there I just have to catch up to it I have to catch up to my future self because I'm already living it so <clears throat> I just have to remind myself like hey I'm, I'm doing a good job everything I'm doing I, I'm on the right path where I'm supposed to be so if you continue to remind yourself like hey I'm, I'm on the right path. I'm doing an amazing job. And, and God got me and I'm going to follow in the steps that God intended for me to go. Then 
You don't have to be so hard on yourself. Even if you fail at certain things. Just know that, hey, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to try again because, hey, this was just a, a, a slight setback. But I'm going to get up and I'm going to dust my shoulders off and I'm going to try again until I succeed. And this message is really a reminder to myself too because I told you before, I'm, I'm my biggest critic. And I have to keep reminding myself, hey, you are doing a good job. You're on the right path. It's just going to take a little bit longer until you reap uh, all the harvest that you, how do I want to say that? Until you reap everything that you, in, you sow. So I'm sowing good seeds and one day they will, I will be able to harvest them just like you so keep speaking positivity over your life again do not <clears throat> sorry do not speak negative words over your life then your life is going to be what you intended and what you envision it to be so be a little nicer and kinder to yourself because you are on the right track i hope this message resonates with you all um, and also what I want to talk about, just know that life is short and we are here for a moment, a blink of a moment, but remember that you have a purpose that you are here to fulfill. So kind of give yourself some time to reflect and think about what is that purpose? What is my dash like our previous episode? Episode, I believe nine. Uh, what are you doing with your dash? Go and listen to that if you have not listened to it. And then you will understand what I really mean with the dash. But you have to think about, are you on the right track? Are you, on, are you fulfilling your purpose in this life? Are you living the life that you, <clears throat> sorry, that you envision you wanted to live? Or... Are you even living at all? Or are you just existing? You're just going with the flow until something happens. Remember, faith without works is dead. So if you don't put no work in, don't expect stuff to just be handed to you. That's something everybody needs to remind itself. If you don't put that work in, it's not coming. You can manifest all you want to, but if you don't do anything to, to bring that energy towards you, then don't expect it to ever manifest itself in your life. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank you all for listening to Unapologetically Sean every week. Of course, we're going to always have an episode for our new series, Black Girl Healing Session. And Black Girl Healing Session really is to help us black women, you know, see different things that we need to heal in our lives. And it really is like very therapeutic to talk about because it's healing me too, being a black woman. It's a lot of things that I need to heal from. And if I can help other women heal as I am healing, it will be great. So it's like a win-win. All right. This was great. I'm glad you all listened. I hope you all have a great week. And I will be back with another episode on unapologetically shines podcast remember you can listen to us again on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, breaker uh radio public anchor of course pocket cast and you always always can go listen to every episode on youtube on my channel life with shine please like and subscribe to any of my videos and let's I'm trying to get to a hundred subscribers hopefully by the end of the year you know I, I put that in that I'll manifest that you know I'm just trying to grow my YouTube channel because I've had it for a long time but never really done nothing with it and if I can motivate other people to be better and be positive and live a positive life then hey I'll use YouTube to get that message out all right, y'all have a great week and a blessed day. All right.
Bye. And we're back with another episode of Unapologetically Shine, where we talk about self-care, mental health awareness, and a splash of pop culture and any and everything that I like to talk about. So this week's episode is going to be about stop letting people live rent-free in your mind. All right. Now, let me explain a little bit what I'm trying to say. Now, a lot of us allow or give people power over us. And that's really what I mean by letting people live rent-free in your mind. Now, let me think of a few examples. So say, I'm just going to give some little hypothetical, you know, generalized examples. But say you... um. You're dating this guy, right? And you're so head over heels for him and all of that. And everything is going good in the beginning. And then everything goes downhill later on, right? Y'all break up. Now, you're still in love with him. Deep in your core, you're still in love with him. But you try to tell yourself, no, I ain't in love with him. I don't even want him, right? So, you start subconsciously you're doing this so you're not like trying to do this but it's in your subconscious so you're gonna do it you you start stalking him on his uh, social media you start paying attention to every and anything he does right and, and even if y'all you know come back cool and y'all yeah back and forth on and off back and forth everything he does you know affects you like it affects you mentally, it affects you spiritually, it affects you. And again, a lot of that is because y'all have soul ties if you, you know, have been sexual, right? So, everything he does bothers you. And, and remember when I said, stop letting people live rent free in your mind? That is an example. You, everything he does, he might not even be paying attention. He probably even forgot about you. But... If he can still have power over you, and, and it's been years down the line now, and he could still have that hold on you, anything he does, anything he says, bring your whole world down, that means he's still living rent-free in your mind. This can go for anybody. It could be a friend, a parent, any of that. If a person can still have that hold on you, you still worrying about every little thing that that they're doing but they don't care anything about you they don't care what's going on with you they're not doing what you're doing it's because they still got your power you you're still giving them power no matter what it is you're still giving them that power so you know i always got to give you all a little message or a little advice like you have to you really have to detox from people and you know with soul ties sorry with soul ties, you have to you have to cleanse yourself from them because you're still attached to that person. Even if you tell yourself, no, um, I'm done with this person. I don't even like them. I ain't worried about them. But deep down inside in your heart and in your soul, you're still connected to them in some type of way. So you have to detox yourself from this person and you have to literally let them go. This is another episode that's going to really be talking about letting people go because if they can still have that power over you, you have not let them go from your from your mind, body, and soul. So you have to really take a moment and cleanse your mind, body, and soul of this person or of a thing or whatever because nobody deserves to live rent-free in your mind and they were no good in the first place for you so they don't deserve to take that much space up in your heart and in your mind so let me think of some more uh examples not just with you know men this is not all about men you know this is just in general i mean it could be if if you're with a, if you're a man and you're with a woman and she's living rent free in your mind and she didn't moved on with her life and you still stuck you know, you have to think about like, hey, I need to let this person go because they're not doing anything but keeping me stuck 
in one spot. Like you can't prosper if you keep holding on to certain things or certain people. And me, myself, I've been through that. Even with, that's a whole nother thing with abandonment. Like I put myself in that type of situation, but I was very young too. I was like 17 and my first real, real boyfriend. And I was like madly in love with him. And you know, and like after my mother died and I got really attached to him because, you know, I felt like he was the only thing I had left, right? I'm not saying he was a bad person. He wasn't a bad person. I'm not going to say that. He was not a bad person. But, you know, I let him live rent free in my mind for a long time after we had broke up. And even when he had a baby with somebody else, like I was looking at his page, following his his sister. I mean, I still follow his sister to this day, but I, I don't I don't have that soul tie anymore. It's gone. Like I let that go long, long, long time ago. So I can still follow his sister and not have no issue and not feel no type of way because I don't. <laughs> but it's just the point. Like back then, like I was attached. It didn't matter what guy I was talking to. He, I was attached to him. Like my soul was attached to him in some way. And, and it was probably because, of course, that was my first everything. So that was a strong soul tie. You know, because, you know, the first guy you be with, most of the time you get attached, you know. But anyway, we're going to go past that. Uh, So that I let him live rent free in my mind for a long, 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 long time until I, I really let him go. And sometimes you just have to let people go and be okay with it not working out. And, you know, with age comes wisdom for some you know everybody shoot there's some dummies that's 50 60 70 years old <laughs> so that don't always work for everybody but with age come wisdom and i learn to let people go and to accept what i cannot change so that's my message for you is to not allow people to hold your power Stop giving people power. Stop letting them control your emotions and everything you do. If it don't work out, it don't work out. You just have to accept that it did not work out and you are good. And you're going to move on and you're going to find better. You're going to do better. And this person will not have the hold on you anymore. Like you don't have to worry about uh, what they're doing because it doesn't matter anymore. You know? You're going to prosper and you're going to be better. So if you don't take nothing else from this uh, podcast, take that. Don't allow anybody to take your power. Don't allow anyone to dictate how you feel, what you think, where you go, how you progress in life. Because remember, they are not thinking about you most of the time when you're so worried and upsetting yourself and worrying about what somebody else is doing they're not thinking about you at all so if you can't take nothing else from this just remember to not give people your power you control how much you give a person control over your life and that goes for any type of relationship. All right. I do appreciate you all for always listening to my podcast, watching my YouTube videos, and just supporting me in general. Supporting my brand, Amore24. Yes, I do currently have a sale going on. It's probably going to be throughout the whole year just so we can get a fresh start i'm gonna do some rebranding and relaunching at the beginning of the year and yes so new things are on the horizon so if you don't know my business is amore24 my website is www.amore24.com and that's the roman roman numerals xxiv 
just so you know not the number 24 roman numeral all right just for the people that don't know you also can shop directly on facebook and also on instagram all my handles are amore24 just so you know if you didn't know amore xxiv all right i just had to throw that plug in there and also um <clears throat> sorry i'm thinking about doing like a podcast for like a vision board you know new year's resolution what's the plans for 2022 it's crazy to even say 2022 now but i'm really trying to decide how do i want next year to look you know what habits i want to break uh and what habits i want to start you know so if you all are interested i i want to do something live maybe like do a vision board virtual vision board party or something it'll be just myself i guess and whoever wants to watch so just think about that maybe on instagram live i don't know facebook live one of them lives i don't know i've never done live actually actually yes i have i've done it on facebook for another group that i created a long time ago but um that would be cool that that way all of us can do a vision board for next year and prepare for the new year and so we can start doing some more healing in the new year but yeah so i'm rambling on i gotta wrap it up i do appreciate you all listening you know you can listen to me on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, um anchor spotify radio public um i think it's pocket cast and always on youtube i upload an episode on my channel life with sean i also plan on growing my channel too i, I want to grow a lot next year so the word for next year will be growth a new and approved sean i will be turning 30 next year so that's a whole new chapter in itself so yeah but thank you all for listening to unapologetically shine and i'm out bye